Hey everybody and welcome back to my channel. I'm Susie, the owner and creator here at Susie on the Farm. I'm back from a wonderful vacation and I can't wait to get started on some more Christmas projects today. In today's video, I have four more Christmas thriftlets for you. I hope you enjoy. Let's go ahead and get started. Today's first project is a super simple one. I thrifted these uh, red containers. One is just a large mug that I thought was super cute. And the other is a vase. And I'm simply going to put a transfer on these just like they are. The colors match pretty well. And I thought they would go great in a little vignette with these roses um, from the Candy Cane Cottage Transfer Pack that was in the new IOD release this winter. These are the prettiest roses and soft Christmas colors, and I thought that they would pair well with this bright red, and they do. They look so good. So I put one on this little mug. I am not going to seal these. These are not going to be like dishwasher safe, but more than likely, they're just going to be a shelf sitter. Um, with a tree or something in them or some Christmas floral. This one here also had a tree with roses and I think that's such a wonderful idea. I'm thinking next year I might do a small tree with uh, roses and florals like that instead of traditional uh, ornaments and I think that that would be so beautiful after looking at this transfer. If you've never used a transfer, it's super easy. You take the backing off, you rub it with the stick that it comes with, it transfers onto your project and that's how simple it is. And look how beautiful these turned out. I love these flowers. I'm so very excited about this next project. So I saved this pair of work boots of Mason's. His foot grows so fast that he didn't even have time to wear these enough to wear them out or get them really dirty because let's be honest, he doesn't use work boots that much. So I have had the vision for about a year now and couldn't wait to turn these into some Santa boots. I've already cleaned them up really good. And like I said, they're in pretty good shape. I was gonna just give them to Goodwill, but I had this vision and I wanted to see how this would work. So I'm going to paint both of the boots with Fusion in the color, um, this is cast iron. This is a gorgeous black, um, basically looks like cast iron. And it goes on, fusion paint goes on leather so good. So I got both the boots painted up. And this is a casting that I had made previously when I was gonna do a bunch of ornaments of uh, one of the smaller frames. And I'm gonna use this for the buckle. This one I had already painted white because I was making a bunch of ornaments, but I never got around to finishing all of them. So what I'm gonna do is paint the interior part of the frame black. And once that dries, I'm gonna come back with some of the Fusion um, metallic paint. This is the bronze metallic, and I am obsessed with this bronze. I love the way it goes on everything. It's so antique looking and I just love it. So I'm gonna do the outside of the frame with the bronze and I am going to let both of them dry and then we're gonna put them on the boot like a buckle. And here's where the tricky part came in because where I wanted the buckle to be a little bit higher, the boot didn't stick out enough. It wasn't flat enough. So I had to be kind of tricky with where I put my glue and I had to hold it in place and tape it in place while it dries. I am using a combination of tight bond glue and hot glue for immediate hold because like I said, this had a hard time sticking, but once it cured up completely, it's not going anywhere even though it's only stuck in a small space. Um, I'm going to keep these for myself. I've got them actually sitting outside on the porch. It is covered, of course. It's not getting in the weather, but they're holding up just great, and these buckles have not come off. So I'm going to get them glued on. Like I said, I do have to tape it in place while it cures, 
And I could go ahead and take some of the bronze tape and go all the way around the boot at this time, but I decided just to keep it a little bit more simple. It's very obvious that we are going for Santa boots here after we do this next part. So I'm gonna take um, this larger piece from the trimming mold and I'm gonna dust it with cornstarch. Then I'm going to use some air dry clay I love using molds. Um, you can do so many projects and it adds such a special touch to everything you do. So I just work the clay in my hand and then I kind of roll it into a ball and the IOD molds have this micro rim where it's super easy to clean up the edges. So I had to end up casting four for each boot. So I ended up doing eight of these castings. After I get it all push down in there. I am going to come back with a brayer just to make sure that the back is flattened up really good. And then it's so easy to pop these out. After you get them all cleaned up, I just use gravity, turn them over, and they come right out with all these gorgeous details. Now, this was kind of tricky, too, putting it on. And I could have done a better job, but I'm just using some tight bond glue and a little bit of hot glue and some tape. I'm going to glue this on to the boot all the way around. Normally, I like to paint my clay when it's wet, but I decided not to paint these because the white color was perfect for the boots. But just know, if you don't paint your clay, it dries pretty fast and there might be some shrinking and some cracking, and that did happen here, but it's not super noticeable. I could have also, if I had been thinking right, I could have made sure that all the connections and everything were in the back, but it turned out pretty good. So like I said, I used four for each boot, and I did two layers of this trim. I was worried about going all the way to the top, but by the time I put the floral in there, you couldn't tell a difference. And also these molds, these trimming molds, they fit together perfectly. As you can see, they made where the design goes together perfectly. And y'all, once I got these boots done, I love them. They're not perfect. Like I said, I had a little bit of shrinking and a little bit of cracking in my molds. But once you put the floral in there, they are such a cute addition to my porch decor or really anywhere. They would be so cute sitting under a Christmas tree. Or if you had a fireplace and you didn't use it, you could put these Santa boots in there even without any floral and how cute would that be? What do you guys think about this idea? This next project was inspired by Sonnet over at Sonnet's Garden Blooms. I saw a project she did with some blocks that she had thrifted, and I have a huge box full of these blocks. And I've done a couple of different things with them. These are a little bit larger than I would like. Um, but to start with, I am going to paint, I'm going to make a Christmas tree out of these like Sonnet did. I'm going to do a little bit different, but... The inspiration totally came from her. So I'm gonna paint four of these blocks. Actually, I'm gonna paint six of these blocks in Carriage House. And then I'm going to paint three more or four more with, this is Fort York Red. I kinda wish I would have went with a deeper red instead of such a brighter one. I just feel like it would have went with the Carriage House a little bit better, but I do love the way this turned out. So I'm gonna paint all four sides of all the blocks. So I thrifted this sign a while back. Um, can't remember how long ago or what I paid for it, but it's also like a tray. 
And I thought that you could do either side, you know, something on both sides to change around. So we're going to do the tray side of this today. And I'm going to give it a quick coat of Chateau. This is Fusion Mineral Paint in the color Chateau. Um, I just didn't want to see all that wood grain. I want a little bit lighter of a background. So I just did one good even coat of Chateau. And then I'm going to come back with the Kindest Regard stamp. This is a great background stamp. I'm using the IOD ink in the stone gray. It's just not as harsh as the black, and it does a great background. So I'm going to go ahead and put the stamp on the inside of the tray. And I'll have to stamp it up twice to do the bottom part as well. But like I said, it's just a subtle gray in the background and it turned out really good. For the next step, I am going to use the tight bond glue and I am going to glue all of these blocks in the shape of a tree. Um, I did paint one box, one block brown for the trunk of the tree. Then we're just going to layer up the top of them. I'm doing the sides and the bottom with the tight bond glue. So this is not going to come apart once this glue has cured. I think I spent more time trying to decide what I wanted to be showing on the front because you can see the little pictures on the blocks through the paint and I think that's just a cute little added touch to it as well. You know they're blocks. You might as well see the toys and everything on them. I thought they were super cute. So once I got all the blocks glued down in place, I let them dry overnight and then we're going to come back and stamp some words or a word, I decided just to do the middle three and to do a star on the top. Um, the letters are from the typesetting stamp, and the star is the closest I could find to a star was in the cozy stamp set. Um, it is such a cute little stamp with all these sweater designs and stuff. So I grabbed what looked like a star from that for the top, and we are simply going to use a thin mount. Your stamps are sticky on one side, so they stick to the plastic thin mount to hold them in place. And then once I did the star, I wiped off the little extra things on the side so that that would not stamp and just the star stamped in the center. To finish this off, I had a transfer left from last year's Christmas transfer, and I had this pretty little swag, and I felt like it needed a little something more at the top. I could have done a bow. Um, that would have been cute, but I decided to do this transfer to make it a real multimedia type thing with the stamps and the blocks. And now the transfer, and this is the cutest. You can hang this. I have not put a sawtooth on it yet. I sealed it all up. So like I said, you can just sit it um, on a shelf or I can put a hanger on it and you can hang it. And I think this turned out so unique and so cute and just something that you're not going to see everywhere. That is one of my favorite things about doing thrift flips is everything is different. No one else has any of these designs. Today's final project actually turned out to be my absolute favorite. Y'all don't forget to please leave a comment below. Let me know what was your favorite or just any kind of comment. Like this video, and if you haven't already subscribed to my channel, I would love it if you would subscribe. 
So I'm going to decoupage in this cute little gold frame. It was cute, but I wasn't crazy about the warmest wishes. So I'm going to um, just paint over it with a coat so that doesn't show through. And then I'm going to decoupage. This deer comes from the Christmas Masterboard. This is the Roy Cycle Paper, and you can get this along with all of the IOD and the Fusion products that I use in my projects on my website, suzyonthefarm.com. I'm using um, Fusion's Transfer Gel to decoupage this down, and I simply just start with a little starter strip, put some of the medium, decoupage medium down, and then I smooth out the paper with my brush, smoothing out any wrinkles. Um, I do recommend spraying the back of your paper. Um, the Roy Cycle papers are just thick enough where it works, and it just helps the paper go on and helps the wrinkles release. So I got this decoupaged, and it is dry now. And um, while I do like the gold frame, it's a little too bright, so I'm going to use the metallic bronze again and just um i don't know lighten up or change the tone of this frame where it's not such a bright gold and i love how it turned out i also had a couple of little mirrors um, that were square like this and i painted the frames of them and put a transfer on them to match once the um paint is dry i had done some castings for this previously um, if you want to see how i use the resin i have that in several videos and probably in the next one i'll show y'all again but i already have these castings made anytime i'm doing up some i like to make up a bunch of them these ornate pieces are from the uh, classic elements i think so i went ahead and painted them with the metallic bronze too it this uh, paint covers really good on these molds. I only had to do one coat and then just a few little touch-ups in the details. Also made some castings from, um, I think it's called the Holly Lane mold, and I went ahead and painted them the same. It's just some leaves and berries and some pine cones and such. So I painted everything in the bronze. I let that dry, and I'm going to come back, do a little bit of embellishing, on these little ones but first i am going to glue the ornate ones on and i think this absolutely makes this frame so unique i'm going to take the big one and i'm going to hot glue and use some tight bond to put it on the top of the frame being careful to get it directly in the center and then the smaller one i'm going to go on the bottom and i'm going to put it just where it just sits up right and they are lined up and I could have left this exactly how it is because I think it's super cute. One thing I would recommend is I should have took a little air dry clay. I was in a hurry, but I should have took some air dry clay and just filled in those words because they were indented just a little bit. And you can kind of see the E underneath the deer there. It's not bad. And if I didn't point it out, you probably wouldn't even notice it. To embellish the um, holly, I'm going to come in and just fill in the berries with some red. I'm going to let that dry, and then I'm also going to use just some antique gold to highlight over the pine cone, and just a real soft green to dry brush over the leaves, just to give them all just a little bit of contrast, and I think that they turned out super cute. And then I'm just going to glue them inside the frame around the deer, just to give it a little bit of added touch. That's one of the fun things about Thrift Lips too, is you can totally make it your own. You can go, I, I tend to go overboard. I either go way overboard and add too much, or I just keep it very simple. But I just love these molds and the what they add to a project. So I love how these turned out. I simply hot glued them inside of the frame. Do you think I should have left these off or do you like how I have added them in around the deer? Let me know in the comments below.
I hope you all have enjoyed today's video and the projects. I am so happy to be back from vacation. We had a wonderful time, but now I am refreshed and ready to get going again. And I love this frame. I hope you guys do too, and I will see you again next week.